So I've had a bit of heat and a fan onto the riser, so it's set up a little bit. It'll be fairly stable now. It's still, you know, it doesn't completely dry, but that's fine. Um, it'll, uh, yeah, it, it'll hold. You know, it'll take a little bit of a knock, um, but I'm still not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be pushing it. We're going to be work really carefully, but it's time to insulate the riser. Now we're going to insulate the whole firebox as well. The whole lot's going to be covered in insulation, but uh, the riser is the most important bit. This is the section that gets the hottest. Uh, so I've got this stuff, which is a ceramic fibre insulation. It's not the cheapest stuff, but it's not horrifically expensive and it's really good. It's the stuff that they use for um, covering kilns and things like that to keep the heat in. So I'm going to put a section at the bottom, which will come up to about here probably, wrap that around, and then I'll cut a shorter section and I'll do the top. Now I might not have quite enough of this to do the entire firebox, which is fine. It's not a problem. There's other insulations that will... Uh, that'll work but this is you know fairly thin for a huge amount of insulative effect so specifically I wanted it for the riser and I knew I'd need probably more than one piece to do it so I've got two of them here it's like this two meter I think I ordered um, so that'll be actually not sure about that it's anyway enough to do the riser and a bit so any gaps left I'll use uh, rockwell insulation that I've got a load of um, I'm gonna do this in two stages I'm gonna wrap the riser first I'm going to wrap a uh, galvanised wire around it just to hold the whole thing in place and then I'm going to use a galvanised mesh like a hardware cloth around that just to really hold that snugly in place very gently so that when the barrel's in place later then it comes time for maintenance I can pop it off uh, the lid top of the barrel I can get right down inside to do any maintenance that needs doing and uh, the metal will hold this nice and tight against the riser so if I'm sweeping it out I'm not going to be damaging the insulation at all um, that's one reason. Now, the early mass eaters that were built, they quite often used metal inside the riser. So they'd have the riser would be the metal, then there'd be an insulation layer, and then metal around that. But the uh, the central area, bit of the riser gets so hot that it just failed. You know, now the, I think if you the very early ones that were more coupled together and they sort of worked and so on, um, you know, it was uh, a, a slow evolution of the technology. Uh, didn't get as hot as they do now, so that's possibly a reason that some people have still got the perception that metal inside the riser works, but apparently it's a big no-no these days, so I'm not even trying it. Uh, but outside, because once the gases come up and they hit the top of the barrel, shed a load of heat, and then flow down between the riser, or the insulated riser, and the barrel itself that will be on here, they've cooled off a lot, and at those temperatures it's absolutely fine, it's not going to damage the galvanising at all. <coughs> at all. So, yeah, we'll, uh, bit by bit, we'll put the insulation on, we'll wrap it with wire, and then we'll come around again, and we'll do it with metal, and we'll wrap that with wire again to hold the metal in place. And it should last a really long time. Uh, it's a fairly dry, non-corrosive environment, uh, actually, um, once we're out of the burn tunnel here, because there's no creosote, there's none of the acids, there's none of the really um, corrosive stuff that you normally get with burning wood. just doesn't happen in this, because it's all burned off as fuel, so things last a really long time. Right, let's get started. So that's the riser insulated, roughly. See, I've come up a little bit. Once I got it all snugged in, I'll come around and I might tuck that down a little bit and, uh, you know, I'll trim off a little bit if necessary. But you can see it's really basic, just wire wound around it just to hold the insulation in place. Because next is I'm going to encase it in this stuff. And uh, if I was trying to hold all that in place, while doing that and it's easily cut with scissors and stuff it's pretty easy to work but it is also you know fairly fragile you see it tears apart quite easily so that's why we're protecting it but also trying to hold that in place while wrapping it with the with the mash would be really difficult uh, you know without nudging the riser anyway so yep that's the next job just to get the mesh on that that's the cage onto the riser so you can see that i've wrapped it in the mesh and then I've used wire twists around it in a few places just to hold it all in place. And then when it's all put in, I just put, put the pliers on and just give it a kink. And it just tightens the whole thing up. Because you don't tighten down too much on the brick because don't forget they're just held together with clay. There's no mortar involved. But yeah, I managed to do that without giving it a single bump. So that's good. I'm pleased with that. Now I'm going to use a bit of the leftover material cut to size to just fit on the top of the burn tunnel. And down the sides here there's a little lip so that'll fit quite nicely and right use that to wrap the top of the burn tunnel and then the rest of it i'm going to use rock wool for because it's not quite so critical 
but uh, yeah that's the next bit so if there are must the last bit of the ceramic I've cut it down to size and I've cut little notches out just so that it'll fit really nicely into this little recess that was just because of the way it was constructed uh, and the little bits that got cut out here have been used to just tuck in here into the end so it's worked really nicely looks almost like it's been nice doesn't it it's really cool so the next step is to get rock wool and we'll wrap the rest of it up to this kind of height i don't want to come any higher i could just pile more insulation on but when the manifold comes through i want to be able to put a, you know a good uh, thickness of material through here for the barrel to rest on and i don't have to cut any bricks so i'm going to leave that at the size it is at the height it is and we're just going to wrap everything in mesh and uh yeah that'll be the insulation done so that's the rock will cut the size and you can see that where i've got little projections i've cut little sockets so that it will fit neatly against that and it'll snug down nice and neatly this just makes it a much easier surface to get the mesh around and then later the cob onto as well so that's it completely finished and insulated that's a decent thickness of insulation and it's got wire cage all the way around it just to contain it while i do the cob around it but that's uh in a little while that first things first i need to get the barrel fully prepared and get that ready for mounting and i need to build the manifold which is why i've got this ring out all right 